Hello all, very good morning. In today's topic, we'll discuss what are all the concepts of this demography. So in yesterday class, we have seen regarding the demography and its scope and what are all the elements that were involved. So in today's class, particularly, we'll see what are all the concepts that were involved in the demography. First of all, I want you to know what is this demography. So what is this demography? So as we have discussed in the earlier classes, demography means nothing but it is the scientific study of population. So it is mainly helping us to identify what is the number of population in a particular area, what is the number of population, what is the marital status, what is the birth rate and what is the death rate, all these things can be studied to the demography. So if you see this demography, it is an ever growing subject, why because for the development of the community, for a development of a country, we, we all must need some data. So the data which is provided by, which is provided by the community is this demography so in demography we are mainly seeing the what is the size of the population what is the shape of the population what is the structure what are the elements that were involved in the population what is their behavioral aspect what is their lifestyle what is the what is the ratio there all these things can be understood in the demography here for example if you want to gather a demographic data so we must need some concepts so without any concepts we directly we cannot go and search there so for example you want to know how many number of fetal deaths were occurring so you can consider that as a fetal death concept for example you want to know how many stillbirths are occurring so what is the stillbirth so how you will calculate the stillbirth so what is the widowhood how you will calculate this widowhood what is the menopause how you will calculate this menopause so all these aspects are coming here so if you want to study this demography, if you want to form a demographic data, we must need some essential concepts. So the essential concepts that were used are we are going to discuss now. So coming to the first one, let us see what is the stillbirth. So if you see here stillbirth, so for, uh, firstly we are involving here gestational age. We are involving here gestational age. So what is this gestational age means? So from the period of conception to the birth of the baby. For example, if you take a woman, so if she is conceived, so at the time of conception, from the time of conception to the birth of the baby, you can consider it as a gestational period. So how you can say a stillbirth means when a baby is at the gestational age of 28 weeks, she is able to survive on her own even even at that time if the delivery is occurring or if the birth of the baby is occurring. So if the baby is died after 28 weeks of gestational age, so you can consider it as a stillbirth. So if the baby is, if the fetus is dying after 28 weeks of gestational age, you can consider it as a stillbirth. So this is the concept which is involved in the measuring of the stillbirth. Now we will see what is the fetal death. So here prior to the delivery of the baby so for example if you see here the mothers will go for delivery at the at the month of or at the weeks of 32 to if you see pre it is 32 34 is the average and 36 is the post we will say so if you see here when the mother when the mother is about to deliver the baby before the expulsion or the extraction of the baby from the womb of the mother so if the baby is dying so there we will consider it as a fetal death so before the baby is being born so uh, when the baby is extracted outside and if you see the baby without any kind of life if the baby is not breathing then you will consider it as a fetal death so you have you understood what is this stillbirth and what is this fetal death stillbirth means after the 28 weeks of gestational age if the baby is dying you will consider it as a stillbirth coming to the fetal death you have seen the baby alive till the birth of the baby so when the baby when the birth process has started when the delivery when the first stage of delivery has started and the baby came out with no pulse or with no breathing so if the baby is dead then you will consider it as a fetal death so during the delivery time during the birth of the baby the baby has died so you are considering it as a fetal death if the baby has died after the 28 weeks of gestation we are considering it as a still death so nextly what is the family size so what is this family size means here if you want to study regarding the family you must know what is the family so how many number of persons are living in the family what is the total number of children what is the total number of women what is the total number of couple so all these things were involved in the family size nextly we'll discuss what is this child death so mainly 
this child uh, this child that is occurring due to different types of causes social causes and other types of causes and uh, there are many deaths within a period of one year of birth of the child so some cases likely newborn baby dies within 29 days it is called as neonatal deaths now we'll see what are the live births here so when a baby when a baby is born from the mother's womb with a life so you will consider it as a life birth so when she is showing the evidence so when the baby and the mother were separated if the baby is showing any kind of evidence of life such as breathing so breathing beating of the heart pulsation of the umbilical cord she is she is considered as a socially alive person and she is she is becoming or he is becoming the shareholders in the property so like that we will consider it as a life birth so when the baby is born out of the mother's womb with a life it is considered as a life birth next is sterility so what is this sterility means a man or couple a man or woman or couple who haven't given any birth they are called as sterile so what is the sterility means when a when a young adult young adult couple they are successfully participating in their sexual life for at least one year and if they still if they are unable to produce the pregnancy if they still are unable to conceive a pregnancy then they are considered as a sterile you can consider it as a sterility so coming to the parity so in demography here women are classified according to the number of children born alive to them so he, this parity means how many children has born to a mother for example uh, for example if you take a mother a mother with three child so you can consider as a parity as a number three so if you study this obg there you can understand so parity means how many children that were alive for a mother and uh, how many live birth that were occurred what how many abortions were occurred previously what is the what is the number of pregnancy at the current day so they will check all these things in the obg when a mother has conceived in the pregnancy so here if you see we, they will say it as a obstetric score here if you see in parity uh, we in demography they are calculating here how many number of live births were occurred for the mother how many children were alive next we will see what is the adulthood so here it is a stage where a boy or a girl he, he is capable of becoming he is capable of producing the children <clears throat> so if you, you can consider it as a age of puberty so it is mainly depending upon the food consumed and the and the eliminate of the country so here if you see what is this adulthood when a boy or a girl when they are attaining their puberty age when they are enough able to produce a children means when they are enough able to produce an offspring then they are considered as a adulthood so here we are we are taking the adulthood concept also nextly we'll see what is this marriage so you can say, you can say here marriage means it is an illegal union of two persons who are its opposite sex so each individual should report for uh, vital statistics purpose in every society so here marriage is the only way of legal production of the children so if you consider if you see here in every society in every society if a couple has to produce the children so marriage is the only legal way mainly to to go for the reproduction of children nextly contraception so what is this contraception means when a adulthood when a eligible couple is going for the sexual life so if they want to prevent if they want to prevent the pregnancy then they can go for the contraception so you can see here it is a measure taken in order to prevent sexual intercourse from resulting in conception so whenever they want to participate in the sexual intercourse and they don't want any kind of conception or any kind of pregnancy then they can go for this contraception if they are legally eligible couple nextly reproductive span so it indicates the childbearing period of the woman so here if you see here period between the onset of menstruation and losses it is a onset of menopause so if you see here in lot of girls puberty will be attaining at 12 age 12 years of age based on the food that they take and based on the body built so from the age of this 12 years they are capable of producing here but legally if you take the government so after the 18 years only the girl has to be married so here reproductive span means nothing but the capability of a woman or the capability of a girl to go for the pregnancy so if you see an average 50 year old woman they will they will go for the menopause so there will be no menstrual cycles that were coming in them so you can consider it as a menopause so when there is menopause the woman can't go for the reproductive age again because the cycle is stopping there the ovulation cycle is stopped there so what is this uh, 
reproductive span means from the time the menstruation period has started from the time the menstruation has lost so you can consider it as a reproductive span now we'll see what is the separation and what is the divorce so when a wife and husband are not living together and if they had no sexual relationship for a for some period of time you can consider it as a separation so it can be due to various reasons or various disputes so here so, uh, this separation is considered as a prerequisite condition for the divorce. So, if the wife and husband are, husband they are not willing to live together, they can go for the legal. They can go for legal advices to get separated, and legally they have they have rights to get separated. So, after divorce, both will have a right to remarry again. So, for example, if a uh, husband and mother are having disputes and if they want to get separated so they can get they can be separated legally with the help of court with the help of law which is already available in the society so once they have taken the divorce if they want to get remarried again also they can go and get the remarriage but in most of the cases uh, after the divorce were happened the, the wife will or the husband will marry other woman and wife may marry other person so this is regarding the separation and divorce so how why, why we have to study it in demography means we want to know what is the fertility rate we want to know what is the marital status we want to know how many women are capable of reproducing we want to know how many births are occurring so all these aspects are included in demography that's what we are studying all this all these concepts here next layer fertility so here we are measuring the capacity of women to produce the children so fertility can be studied from birth statistics so fertility determined by socio cultural economic and psychological factors so these are the factors involved in the fertility so next we will discuss what is this fecundity so it is the psychological capacity to conceive and bear the children so fecundity it is biological and there are no measurements to go for this fecundity what is this cohort means so children who are born in one year they are called as cohorts so in the participation of life as well as demographic analysis cohort plays an important role so nextly migration so migration means nothing but so nothing but when a geographical conditions are attracting so people are tempted to migrate from one place to another place for example if you see so people are nowadays they are traveling from rural areas to urban areas because the geographical area which is there are the facilities that were already available from if you see from the country india they are traveling to the abroad and they are settling there why because they are the favorable geographical conditions which were present over there they were attracting these people so the migration is coming so when a people migrate within the country there will be no change in the country's population but when the people are migrating beyond the country means if they are traveling from one country to another country then we can have so many population changes so nextly we'll see what is this ratio so ratio means nothing but we uh, for example if you want to know how many number of male persons are present and how many number of female persons are present so you want to calculate for thousand men how many number of women were available you have to go for the ratio so in such a way and if you want to find out for uh, the what is the ratio of population that were living in the urban areas and what is the ratio of population that was uh, living in the rural population so you have to go for the statistical study and you can compare for per square kilometer how many people are living in the urban area and per square kilometer how many people are living in the rural area or for uh, uh, you can you can say it as a size proportional size ratio also you can say so all these things are coming here so this one has an information so whenever you are going to ratio average weight of the person can be uh, detected what is the average age during the census it can be detected so, so if you see when you go for the average age census you can identify how much young gen younger generation which is there in the country so then you can go for a proper ratio and you can go for the demographic study so this is the concept of ratio nextly proportion so it expresses size of one part of a whole in relation to the size of another part of a same whole so here it is a kind of particular ratio a proportion means nothing but it is going in the size it is expressing size of one part to the size of another part so you can consider it as a proportion nextly we'll see what is this percentage here so it is a proportion where it is multiplied by 100 and it is calculated on the assumption that the base number is equal to 100 now nothing but for example you want to calculate your percentage for example you consider your marks here so if your marks is like uh, just like for 600 and if you got so like five five zero five so you have to 
divide this and you have to multiply it into 100 then you will get the percentage approximately like 82 point like approximate percentage you will get so this is how you will calculate the percentage here so you will take what is the total amount it is divided by the obtained mark, obtained amount so what is the total population that you have seen and what is the uh, mark that has been there and you will multiply it into 100 so so that you will get what is the percentage rate so now we'll discuss what are the rates that were there in the community here so what are the rates that were considered in the demography so we will consider the birth rate we will consider the death rate because these two are acting majorly in the population here so the more the number of birth rate the more the number of increase in the population the more the the, the less the uh, number of death rate the more the increase in the population so the higher the death rate the higher the decrease in the population so as as the both are playing a major role in the population count we are ex we are mainly going here mainly for the birth rates and death rates now we will see what is the natural increase and rate of natural increase. So natural increase rate means if you want to consider this what is this natural increase. So mainly you are uh, obtaining it algebraically mainly by subtracting the what is the total of number of deaths that were occurring and what are the total number of births that were occurring in a particular year. So here the rate of natural increase for a population is expressed as uh, thousand per and population per an year so here we will we will we will take what is the number of birth rate and we will subtract what is the number of death rate and you, if we are seeing it mainly for thousand population in a particular year coming to this uh, rate in natural increase you can see means here we are mainly taking the what is the crude birth rate and what we are mainly focusing on what is the crude death rate so based on the birth rate and death rate here this r rate in natural increase it is helping us to find out how long the country will take reach uh, to any given size and if the rates continues in the same level for example we will we will we will predict that the india it will it will cross china population by year 2035 so how we were saying means they are mainly calculating this rni so rate of this natural increase so this rate of this natural increase it is showing us the pace what is the what is the speed that the population is growing on so if the pace if the same pace continues at the same speed at the same speed uh, at a given point of time there are many chances that that the population will increase up to so and so benchmark so like that they will set this benchmark and nextly it is very essential that throughout the study all these concepts should be used so what are all the concepts that we have seen all these studies should be used so the results of the demographers and researchers are very useful in prediction of human needs and uh, here the demographic figures they are giving us clear cut picture of population in a particular country so these are the concepts that were involved in the uh, demography here so so far we have we have seen different types of concepts so all these concepts so based on the birth rate but based on the death rate how many children are dying how many stillbirths are occurring based on that we can go for particular we can we can go for what is the problem there and we can go for the solutions and so that we can sort out the problems and uh, if you see this rna so this rna is helping us to mainly predict the number of so at what time the country can reach if they are maintaining the same pace at what time the country can cross over the benchmark so if you want to calculate those they are going for this r and i and uh, all all these concepts they are very essential for the demographic study mainly for the demographers and researchers they are very useful in the prediction of the human needs where it is necessary so with this we are concluding this today's session so if you have any queries you can drop it them in the comment box and if you like the content please like share and subscribe the channel thank you thank you so much for watching